We welcome everyone to St. Elizabeth Ann Seaton Parish as we celebrate the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please join in singing the entrance hymn number 342 in the Missalette. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. 
Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord. You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from wickedness, from the wickedness he has committed, and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life, since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. 
He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do not out of selfishness or out of vain glory do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other sign, other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord.
Many of us are familiar with the gospel passage proclaimed where Jesus talks about how two sons respond differently to the father's request to work in the vineyard. Scripture scholars remind us that it's always important to put a gospel passage within the context of what else is going on around those particular verses. And the verses before this gospel passage is the scribes and the Pharisees and other leaders of the Israelites are asking Jesus by what authority, by whose authority he is saying and doing what he's doing. They're questioning our Lord's authority. In a similar way, in the Old Testament, we hear the prophet Ezekiel speaking to the people of his day and saying that they are saying, the Israelites of that time were saying, God's ways are not fair. God's ways are not fair because if somebody who is a sinner turns away from his sin and repents and does what is good, the Lord loves that. But if somebody who's a good person turns away from that goodness and sins, then they are responsible for their sins. And the Israelites at that time did not think that was very fair. God's not very fair. In a way, they're questioning God's authority. Jesus in the gospel uses this example of two sons who are both asked by the father to do the same thing, to go out into the vineyard. In the scriptures, the vineyard is always an image of the people Israel. What type of fruit are they producing as the vineyard called by God, chosen by God? And so we hear this passage and Jesus applies the example of these two sons to the tax collectors and the prostitutes who, like the first son, did not do with words uh, what, what the Lord, uh, what, what the master asked, what the father asked, but then repented later and chose with their actions. What they had done and how they had lived their lives, sinful, they repented, as Ezekiel talked about in our first reading. And because of their repentance, uh, they accepted the message of John the Baptist. But the scribes, the Pharisees, the leaders of the Israelites, they did not accept the message of John the Baptist. And they uh, chose to not follow him. We are invited to respond to these words, the word of God, in our daily lives and say, do, does what we say match what we do? Does what we do match what we say? And recognizing that each of us, every single human person is a sinner, we need the Lord's grace. We need his mercy. And his mercy is abundant and given to us. And his grace is given to us to help us to accept that mercy and to change what we say and do if it is not matching our Lord, to humble ourselves and to allow him, his will, his way of living to take root in our minds, in our hearts. Our second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians is that great hymn of humility, that even though Jesus is God, he humbled himself and became a man and didn't just become a man, but he humbled himself even to death, death on a cross. St. Paul says, have in your mind, have in your 
attitude, the mind of Christ. Humble yourself, St. Paul says, that you might put on the mind of Christ. That's the call for each and every one of us. We are all called to humble ourselves, to allow the Lord's grace to help us to, as much as we can, see ourselves as he sees us to be patient with ourselves, to be patient with others, and to show our love for him and our love for others by what we do as well as by what we say. The Lord invites us in various ways to, to do his work by living our lives, by what we say, also by how we invite others and how we are supportive of the Lord's uh, invitation to us as members of his family. This next week, Monday or Tuesday, uh, sometime during the week, you will receive in the mail a, um, a information from, uh, from our diocese on the bishop's appeal for vocations. We are blessed in our diocese to have a good number of seminarians. I think this year it's about 30 seminarians studying uh, to uh, become priests. In that seminary, they are called, as we all are called, to humble ourselves, to allow God's grace to uh, flow into us and help us to not focus on ourselves, but to focus on him, and to allow that humility of the Lord to be in our mind, in our heart. We are called to pray for our seminarians, to pray for our priests, to pray for our bishops, to pray for all persons in the church, and to do what we can to allow the Lord's grace to work in us and to uh, foster the fruit of the vineyard, the vineyard of the church. We ask the Lord to strengthen us and help us each day of our lives. We. Um, recognize the uh, failings and frailty of each of us as human persons. And so we, we choose with God's grace not to focus so much on the weakness, the frailty of human persons, but to ask for God's grace that all of us may put on the mind of Christ and allow his grace to help us in the vineyard in whatever way we are workers in the vineyard, whether that is as priests or religious sisters, religious brothers, a married man, married women, single men, single women, however we are living out our vocation, that all of us are uh, allowing the Lord's grace to help us to put on the mind of Christ and to proclaim his message to all those that we meet. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith we come before our God, offering these prayers for those who are in need. That the Holy Father will always lead the church with courage and conviction in the midst of our troubled world. We pray to the Lord. That world leaders will work to bring justice and peace to the poor and oppressed. We pray to the Lord. That the church's call to repentance and promise of mercy may reach and comfort all those who suffer because of a past abortion. We pray to the Lord. That men and women may generously open their hearts to God's invitation to serve his people through the priesthood, the religious life, the true married life, and the holy single life. We pray to the Lord. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the governments and people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord for favorable weather and moisture, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the faithful departed, that they may join the angels and saints in the glory of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the intention of this Mass, for Cindy Ryan, and for our own intentions, united with Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints, we add in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear Heavenly Father, God of love, God of mercy. We present these prayers mindful of your care and love for us. Make your presence known to all who are in need. Help us to do the work that you call us to do in your vineyard. In your vineyard. We ask these prayers in union with the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Upon the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and we wept, as we remembered you, O Zion. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton, Saint Cosmos, Saint Damien, Saint Wenceslas, Saint Gabriel, Michael, and Raphael, Saint Jerome, St. Therese, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever her hand ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Be mindful of your word to your servant, O Lord, in which you cause me to hope. This has been my comfort in my affliction. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Catholics who will be receiving Holy Communion are invited to come up to the communion rail. If you are unfamiliar with a communion rail, please know that you may receive communion either kneeling at the rail or standing at the rail, either on the tongue or in the hand. If you are living together in the same home, husbands and wives or families, you may be closer together. Otherwise, keep a social distance. There's blue X's on the floor. After one group has received at the communion rail and then returned to the pews, the next group is asked to wait until the ushers uh, wipe the communion rail before they come forward.
Our communion hymn is number 274 in the Missalette, One Bread, One Body, number 274. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. A reminder that Friday of this week is the uh, first Friday of the month. There are holy hours. Uh, we're invited to uh, join in. The whiteboard is in the narthex. Also, the bulletin is in the narthex, and uh, after Mass, there is um, cinnamon rolls and coffee and juice and uh, water over in the parish hall. Uh, faith Mass are encouraged, um, but be at a social distance also. Um, if you don't go over for coffee and rolls, go outside and uh, 
uh, stop and visit with other persons and um, and go to do the work of the Lord in the vineyard. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And close to you, bid me that with your saints I may be praising you forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 275 in the Missalette. O oh God, beyond all praising, number 275. <laughs> Sorrow. 